Let me start with the introduction or a short motivation for the topic. So how does a spaghetti break? If we think of a simple spaghetti and we bend it, so we think it might break into two pieces. So you can try that at home. You won't be able to do that. It will always, always break in three or more pieces. Even the famous physicist Richard Feynman was very fascinated about this problem. So what we have with fracture is prediction is very difficult, but there are methods to simulate fracture, especially paradynamics, and we wrote a package to use that with Julia. So what is paradynamics? Paradynamics is a non-local formulation of continuum mechanics and it's discretized the continuum with material points. So it's a non-local method, so it means the points interact only inside of a specific horizon called delta, and the set of the points that is inside of this horizon is called point family. So the kinematics from this is, so we have these interactions between these points, uh, they are also called bonds. And if you have a deformation on the body, the, yeah, these bonds have a length change and which is then used to calculate forces between the bonds or between these points. So with our Julia package, paradynamics.jl, you can use uh, that to make simulations. We have a few features. First, you can use quasi-static simulations very basic simulations with the dynamic relaxation algorithm. Then, of course, the main thing, the dynamic simulations, where you can have fracture and damage. With the new version 0 0.2, you can also have multi-material simulations where each material point has different material properties. And, of course, the logo, you can have multi-body contact simulations. So on what we will focus on now is an example simulation using this dynamic framework with the velocity valley algorithm. So basically we need six steps to perform the simulation of this spaghetti fracture problem. What you can see here is uh, of the full source code that is needed with a package. And these steps are actually, yeah, all included in the source code. We go through that step by step now. So first, after loading the package, we have to define the point cloud. And therefore, a few methods you can do that. Um, the easiest method is to use the read INP function and import a finite element mesh that was defined in abacusreader.jl. Uh, that abacusreader.jl is used to import the meshes you define in Abacus. So basically what is done, uh, any yeah, finite element is then uh, converted to a point cloud. So what you, when you run this in the REPL, you can see the nodes are found and elements are passed and element sets are then turned into point sets. The next step, we have to define material properties. Here we use a simple point-based material. Um, here the first parameter we have to define is the horizon, which is basically this important parameter of paradynamics. Then we have uh, density, Young's modulus, and epsilon c, which is basically the critical bond stretch yeah, that you need to define for the damage. If you run this in REPL, you have a nice output, and you can see additional parameters of the simulation are then calculated within this type. Um, important thing for this simulation is we have to define boundary conditions, and what we use here are force density boundary conditions, and the setup we use is some four-point bending setup. So basically, we are just bending um, yeah, on four points, what we use is um, the force density with linear increasing amount with time, as you can see here. And as I mentioned before, the point sets um, we use from the point cloud were defined in Abacus. 
for the temporal discretization, you can easily define the algorithm. Here we use a dynamic one, the velocity valet algorithm, with 30,000 time steps. And for export settings, we have to define a name and a path where we want the results to be written at. And this 20 means that every 20th time step with uh, VTK files with the help of the package writevtk.jl are written. So, and last thing, we have to define the analyst type, analysis type with all the previous defined input parameters. In order to run the simulation, we have then submit the job. We now look at the results. Here we can see the spaghetti and the bending process. And after a few milliseconds, you can see the cracks form. You take a closer look. You can see some kind of damage on the upper side. And then the first cracks and secondary cracks form. So basically, we have multiple pieces and these kind of cascading cracks we can see in the experiments. So to sum up, the package paradynamics.jl is able to perform fracture simulations with only a few lines of code. The current feature set is a solid foundation, but we want to extend that. So for the future development, we plan on releasing no material models and additional discretization features. And one core point, we want to improve the multi-threading performance of the code. And therefore, we, we are welcome you to submit issues, feedback on pull requests to improve the package with us. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, what's the largest problem you've, uh, you've used this for? What kind of problem? Um, numerically speaking, so we used it on a, yeah, it's called kalthoff winkler test with, it's, yeah, I think it was 20, 30,000 material points. So it's able to do that, but we, you can get uh, memory problems, um, and that's the point we want to improve.